Hi all, I have another fascinating game to show you today. Hannibal 1.7 against Dealer 0445. Let's see, D4 from Hannibal. We have Knight F6, C4, G6, Knight C3, the Grunfield defense now D5. So this became a favorite of Gary Kasparov, replacing his Tarash defense in his World Chess Championship match against Anatoly Karpov one year. So the Grunfeld became his weapon of choice. Hypermodern, C takes knight, uh, C takes knight takes d5, e4. So white has this center and black tries to attack it with moves like c5. So here after bishop e3, queen a5, queen d2. And actually black castles. So no exchange of queens in this game with cd. Rook c1, knight d7, bishop d3. And now e5, and this potentially changes the character of the game, especially now after white plays d5. We've gone from black having peace pressure on white center to a more closed position, reminiscent of uh, King's Engine defense. And now f5, queen c2, f4. Hannibal doesn't seem to mind black stretching out on the king side here. Now with the threat of c4, this is actually addressed in advance with b5 to be able to answer now c4 with b4. White castles and the queen returns back supporting g5, g4. So this looks like a fairly standard squish strategy, one of my favorites actually. In fact, there's many elements of leaders attacking play like form pawns and squishing, which I really appreciate and love. And it's even been noted on the Leela Chess blog. So yeah, a3, a5. Are we going to get a kingside squish? Bishop e2, g5, h3, h5. This is an orchestration of force here and a beautiful move now switching resources to the king side i wonder if you can guess which rank is clear here is the clue what would you play in this position a lovely delightful attacking move so this is not a tigran petrosian style game but rather a more brutal attacking game of this metanov style rook a6 the rooks coming in over here to support this attack h4 white's trying to tease the pawns forward knight g5 rook g6 and that invites knight e6 and you might think well what what of knight e6 here why can't white play knight e6 the bean counters among you might be saying well doesn't that just win the exchange and i'm going to be material up okay let's address it okay let's address it bishop d3 was played not knight e6 but if we look at knight e6 and look at white's position generally there's a fundamental hole in white's pawn structure here this d4 square you'll notice these adjacent pawns are not holding d4 you'll notice even this bishop cannot even parry d4 that easily via c3 or e3 so with that in mind what would you play here if i give you five seconds nice position and exchange sack rook takes e6 this position the knight's going to reroute the big hole on d4 so keeping a lock on c3 there for example this position white does best uh potentially well if you look at this black's just better with knight d4 coming white does best probably to sack the exchange already with rook d5 to counter sack because if white starts playing passively here then this position is just absolutely lovely for black crushing big advantage technically so anyway that explains a bit why bishop d3 was played not a6 knight e6 anyway so here guess what black plays now if i give you five seconds rook takes g5 yes there's the lust to destroy to smithereens this pawn chain to do that it'll be nice to have h4 putting pressure on g3 and that reminds me of a Nigel Short game, only Nigel Short game, where he really smashes a Fincetto position by putting pressure on the Fincetto pawn structure. So h4 is now coming. So queen a4, white's trying to be pedantic, trying to exploit little holes on light squares or back row uh, weaknesses. Nitpicking move, queen a4. White doesn't deserve anything in this position. Look at white, it's being slaughtered on the king side. 
but White's trying to steal something with Queen A4. H4, Rook C2, Queen H5. Yes, take the pawn. When the house is on fire, as Kasparov says, you don't worry about uh, stuff. You know, a pawn on the queen side. So this is a pawn on the queen side. Yeah, the king side's on fire here, and it seems actually it's a beautiful fundamental play. It seems my own engine is crying out for a technical solution already in this position. Leela actually played b3, more maybe intuitive. Uh, my brute force engine actually likes black's position with this rook left hg hd rook f6 not minding the pedantic check because this rook left here you see that pin on f6 coming to h6 is pretty devastating queens encouraged to go away from the dark squares they're taking a bishop uh, so we can take here without losing f6 and this position is good for black uh, so if we look at this again, instead of rookie two, queen h4, we can just evict the queen. Uh, we can basically win the queen there. The queen would have to be giving it, giving herself away. And on queen uh, h3, there's also the possibility of queen h3 as well. It just shows how strong uh, things are here. That this this is actually quite good as well black has a big advantage so it just shows the strength of black's position but anyway b3 so there might have been a trick missed with hg in the nutshell, in the nutshell. check out the uh the, the detailed analysis uh pgn i'll give you in the link in the comments and in the description so b3 a bit on the waffly side from me there's more concrete stuff to have, to have done bit waffly b3 so anyway here again the concrete hg seems to be strong in this position again the rook left this does seem to be uh very strong this position even if the queen comes and munches the bishop it's pretty strong for black black's going to pick up material with a big advantage but uh, aside from that so knight f6 there's still fundamental pressure on white's little pawn chain there bishop c3 f3 Queen takes c5. Now knight h7 is played here. So with the big threat of knight g5 to h3 check. Bishop d2. Now here, just to show the strength of knight g5, why this really is a threat. You know, knight g5 is coming into h3. You can see this is devastating. Knight takes f2, hg. This would be absolutely devastating. This is kind of scenario where the avalanche of pawns is going to crush the white king big time big advantage so uh so that is parried with bishop d2 bishop f6 now is played bishop b4 tying the knight down to the rook for a moment bishop d7 rook takes b3 rook f7 now the knight can come to f8 potentially and the rook can swing to h7 bishop d2 actually the knight actually uses g5 instead but still there's a poss possible rook h7 on the cards uh, we have bishop takes g5 bishop takes check king g7 d6 now here uh, Leela plays a really strong move bishop d2 it's really strong in its own right and the idea of going into the Achilles Hill square of the white position that d4 square via c3 d4 pinning that pawn making this whole pressure on the pawn chain even worse technically for those technically minded queen uh, in this position there was also king f6 with the nifty idea of rook h7 here this kind of scenario is pretty devastating for white as well where white would have to give up material to stave off disaster it's a total disaster king f6 for white as well as bishop d2 and we see now Rook d8, hg, peeling open that diagonal, and the bishop goes to c3, threatening bishop d4 check. Rook takes, rook takes, rook f2. Queen h3, hitting g3, with e5 protected by the bishop now anyway. So there's no, not even any decent checks. Queen e3, queen takes g3. King g6, making way for rook h7. Rook h2, rook h7 anyway. Queen g1, it's all over. Bond the shouting. Queen takes, and the game was adjudicated here. If we follow this through, black has the crushing bishop d4 check 
after king h1 guess what black can play here to crush white if I give you five seconds black to play probably the best move is g3 with the rook pins and if rook takes now we play the point is g2 check queening with check so yes a very nice attacking game in the style of this Metinov, in my view the undertones of this game echoing some Achilles Hill pawn structure weaknesses on d4 where black was prepared to sack the exchange on e6 in the variations black did in the main game sack the exchange anyway and had other technical opportunities to exploit that h file pivoting a rook to the h file was a possibility at a couple of points but Leela did it anyway uh, it was a great attack game which we can all learn from I believe I love the, the rook coming on that third rank this is another feature of Leela Chess's attacking play that third rank we've seen in other games is a great attacking resource to switch a rook right across to attack the opponent's king okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much